how do I sound? Am I audible? Sorry for the scuffed opening, guys. Welcome to Lore Lines episode 10. Uh, we're discussing Alag today, the Alagan Empire. Uh, you may, uh, wait, uh, may remember that week one and two, we discussed Alag as part of our uh, era's gauntlet. Um, there will be some repeat content today, but I'm happy that you all are here and we can be together and hopefully we'll have a nice flourishing discussion. And um, also we've got some debunking to do, according to Twitter. So I'm gonna bring everyone live and uh, once again, welcome to Lore Lines. Am I live? We are live. I'm live. I can talk. Yes. <laughs> Who gave you this power? <laughs> they let me out of my pen. Unlimited cosmic power? What's this? So, uh, Alec. There, this is a huge discussion because this is going to, okay, so this is going to take up the next two weeks. Um, for anyone that do not, that does not, or is not interested in Alag, we get it, we understand, but I mean, to us, this is a very important part of Eorzean lore and history as it shapes many of the future events that occur, not only in just Eorzea, but Eidolon as overall. Um, we do regret to uh, inform you that Bonnie and Cobron uh, could not make it today. So it is going to be just us five. Um, but they'll be joining us, I'm, I'm sure, again next week or the, the week following. So shout outs to them wherever they are. Yeah, real life happens. It's fine. What is this real life that you speak? It's a, it's Fair a false enough. thing. We're we're all in the matrix. Sounds fair. <laughs> At any rate, <laughs> red pill, blue pill. <laughs> so let's begin at the beginning. So approximately five thousand years ago, so Eorzean civilization reach would uh, would possibly be called its peak. Um. And at least in like the technological advancement or its overall influence of the rest of Highland. Um, this was a, this was right after the uh, third uh, umbral calamity, the calamity of fire, where churches raced to pretty much burn and uh, hunt down anyone who did not agree with them, thus starting the calamity of fire. Um. And the world and, turned into Nero and the tallest cavers web dream. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the advent of the Allegan Empire, uh, it spread north to Ilsebard, east to Authord, and then south to Mericidia. It was a, an enormous empire. It was not just a localized thing, nothing that you could limit to just Mordona just a few pieces of relics here and there. It was enormous. Um, who wants to go ahead and just uh, add a few details to the beginning of like the Allegan's influence overall um, in, in history? Uh, Fallon here. Um, Alag, raising my hand, is <laughs> definitely a <laughs> global tier civilization, uh, especially when we get into the fact that they can throw satellites into space um we'll discuss some of this later but um the satellite drop not a colony drop <laughs> <laughs> oh boy flourish flourish guys um right. the, the technology they have i i was talking to some of the team earlier just before this and um the level of technology they developed is it doesn't really even have a corollary to modern society. Not, I don't. I'm not really clear how the stuff works by looking at it. It's not obvious. It's like true Magitech. It so. feels very organic, as I kind of like figured out with Fail when we were talking about it earlier. Like it just feels very different from Garlean Magitech in that sense. Like it feels a lot more almost sensory overload, almost a little bit. Like it's it's something that almost seems like it's more intended to interface with an individual in a full sense rather than just visually or audibly. It's, and, and that's the thing too, like they, it's looking at back at how 5,000 years ago, at least to primarily just, this, this could be just 5,000 years ago from today, from 
the history bubble that we know of today, the time bubble that we're in today, they were centuries upon centuries upon dozens of centuries ahead of their time um, with how they, uh, how technologically advanced they were in the fields of like research, medicine. They were even looking at undoing tempering, um, which is something that uh, today that we weren't even, that wasn't even in discussion really with any of the uh, nations. They were just dealt. They just dealt with it as, you know, as any primitive civilization saw fit. If they were a fanatic, they shot them. They killed them on sight. They didn't think about, you know, why don't we redo this whole process, undo this whole process, and save the person or beastmen. But Alec was the one to question that. First one to question that. Um, yeah, or Nila. Just speak. Uh, well, uh, just go for uh, it, Neela. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Go I would just speak a little bit on that. Uh, it seems to me that Alec really is like the the foundation or the skeleton of a lot of the Eorzean story. A lot of what uh, it is has moved forward and had an effect on the future. Like a lot of the Garlean stuff is very inspired by Alec. The uh, summoner quest lines are also very much in Allegan lore and history and even technology in some of the quests. So it's it's a thing that like it's interesting in how it's rippled out and how it's uh, how it still affects the future. Uh, Meowth, go on ahead and hit. Uh, I find that Alag uh did something that was at the time with revolutionary uh, because it, it kind of uh, integrates the first the first eras were about uh, society discovers magic and stuff and uh, then they went a step ahead in their in their society and then they integrated magic uh, into technology and that's how etherochemistry was born and from there, uh, we know the guardians uh, develop Magitech. Uh, but the therochemical uh, research uh, still considered <coughs> extremely advanced. Uh, and well, uh, as for their their impact, uh, one has to, one has to remember that. Not not until how how was uh, the the last tale of tales of the shadows? Uh, it was what like uh, two hundred after the eighth number calamity that uh, they could actually open the crystal tower. That yeah, it was something that, like that. Yeah, get, two centuries to get no some near enough to to elegant technology. Uh, not, I mean, how many years after uh, it took for society to reach to or or some somewhat uh, got near to the elegance uh, degree of technolo technological advancement? It's like, well, uh, as uh, uh, right now we don't. If you tell uh, the city states of the Orsia. Uh, or or anywhere in the near well the far east that you may uh, have a ship launched to the space they will probably laugh in your face <laughs> so it's kind of you know i would this i would describe alag as the closest thing to to the ancients uh, that uh, the sunder world has ever seen Core, do you have thoughts? Well, leaping off of what Mouth just said, it is interesting to remember that we have that strong correlation between him itself being involved in creating the Allegan Empire and guiding it, and the notion that Ally could potentially be considered the closest civilization has come in the Sundered world to reaping the same level of benefits and achievements as the ancient world did in Emerald's time. 
Although that is keeping in mind that we don't actually know for sure if Amarat ever did anything in space, and Allegan did, which is very interesting to me. Like that's, I almost wonder if, in some ways, the Allegan Empire wasn't just deliberately set up to fail to create the circumstances for calamity, but that it potentially exceeded the expectations of the uh, Asians in terms of its potential, and created circumstances that may have even outdone the ancients in some respects, like with space, which may have made them angry at what would have been an argument against what they were doing in terms of the rejoinings. But that's something of a theory on my end. Oh, yeah, no, that's... Theories are welcome on the show. So, Absolutely. Um, let's start with the very, very, very beginning. So, the communities which emerged in the aftermath of the Calamity of Fire, uh, while fearful of the gods, were wary once again to make them the centerpieces of their society. They did not want to have a repeat of the prior Calamity. Uh, pursuit instead of technology, instead of religion, became the centerpiece. Um, and uh, the Divine, they believed that pursuit of the Divine had incurred the wrath of the heavens. So, to avoid a similar fate, mankind chose to place distance between itself and the gods, and instead focus on the individual talents of the people themselves. Um, faith in the gods gave way to faith in oneself. Uh, with this newfound confidence, mankind began producing some of the greatest minds in history. Uh, new discoveries in science and technology were being made every day. Civilization was advancing at a rate uh, unseen in the previous two astral eras, and at the forefront stood a man who would see that civilization reach the far corners of Eorzea, or and the Heidelin, even Zande. So Zande, I it, it doesn't. There isn't really any lore stated in the game, or much of it, anyways, that would credit any emperors before, any leaders before Zande. Just him being the most prominent one. Um, do Have you guys stumbled across anything else that would suggest any type of other leaders before Zande? Not that I can recall. They really only have talked about Zonde. They they haven't really talked about any of the other leadership or any other members of the royal court for the most part, other than like a few little uh, snippets with Yune and Doga and Amon and that whole circle. Uh, I I mean, usually uh, civilization doesn't sprout from magical magical magically from the ground like that. So I assume that Alagans may have had a proto Alag uh, of sorts, uh, and of course I guess they would they would have been rulers. And the only thing we know is that Shan that Shan Emperor Shanda was the first emperor of Alag. But that doesn't mean that he may as well be treading a path that was already set, and it was just the right man. Right, they could have had to, like, to, you know, written down on pen and paper that he was the first emperor. But there could have been someone before. Yeah, I mean, it's like the Republic of Garlemald. Most of the people only remember uh, Emperor Solus because he was the first uh, emperor and founding father, but often forget that Garlemald before that uh, was a nation as well. So, of course, of course, it was a rather tiny nation, often, quite often very bullied because reasons. So it could have been the, the same for, for, for Alec. I mean... Very well could have been. I mean, it was fledgling starting out, but it was still one of the nations that focused, like I said, primarily on technology um, rather than worship of the gods. And after the four third calamity, I'm sure everyone felt the same, instead placing their faith in you know, what they could do as individuals rather than praying to whatever gods or goddesses they believed uh, would save them. Uh, Fao, Nila? Yeah, I have, I have some sidebar commentary. I um, I actually don't imagine that 
uh, Alag was anything like Garlemald, except maybe in the circumstances of being another nation among many, um, but as are all nations, right? So um, the Alagans can clearly weave magic. I doubt they were bullied. Um, it's very likely that they re reached such heights because they had the technological direction that Garlemald had, but had the predisposed attributes of being able to weave. So if you can imagine a Garlean empire that's both using Magitek and has innate capacities in, in, in mage work, um, there wouldn't even be a, a, a contest as to which empire is going to own the planet. So um, I, I'm just imagining if all the soldiers of, of Garlemald right now could could use all the spells that Eorzeans and Domans and all these other people <laughs> can use. It, you know, like, like they say in that last cutscene um, on the way to Shadowbringers um, in Stormblood, uh, you know, a Carlian body and magic? That's not fair. Orgian. <laughs> <laughs> That's hardly fair. That was good. I, I liked that one. Uh, Nila, Kor, whichever, whoever. I'll let Mila go first. All right. Uh, I just had a few points. Uh, I, I did find this... In, uh, I hadn't recalled the bit about that they were intentionally avoiding angering the gods and leaning to technology that way. That is very interesting in the context of Garlemald, which is also very much no, no god, worship, no primal worship. Mm -hmm. it, it's at least another parallel, if not more. And uh, I also... What I recall about Zandi, and my knowledge isn't that solid, but was that the one we fight in the Crystal Tower was indeed a revived version of him. They brought him back as big, the big kahuna or whatever. A, a, an example of this guy will revive our empire, obviously. It didn't quite go like that, but that was the idea. So obviously he must have been a big deal back in the day. Obviously it takes more than one man to make an empire. There was probably all kinds of things going on in the shadows, and obviously something had to come before, something for them to build on to get this great edifice that we, you know, are going to discuss. You were reminding me of the Namazu when you said the big kahuna. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I do hope we will get more lore on that, perhaps. I, I, I don't know, obviously, what, this is pure speculation with regard to Endwalker, but somehow we're going to have to get to the moon. Alex seems like it has the um, technological potential since they have mm -hmm. launched a satellite into space. Surely they have ways to go and visit it at the very least. What, moreover, um, story-wise, we have this, this Allegan expert with Allegan royal blood who is able to hand us a piece of crystal that made us seem to be Allegan royalty. So obviously, I, I feel like they're indicating that it's going to continue to be quite relevant at any rate. That's all I have for that. I fully agree with you, by the way. I imagine, though, that um, this is Endwalker spec, but I really I'm getting Final Fantasy IV vibes, and I think there's a Ragnarok in a dry dock somewhere that we're just going to ride up to the moon. Yeah. Either that's... that or a space portal, but I'm thinking it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a Ragnarok class ship that we're just right. going to hop in and be like, oh yeah, uh, Grahatia can drive it, so... Hmm. He, he's gonna like touch it with his blood, and it will be like he's welcome, a, member of he's the royal family. He's automatically a pro pilot. Years of uh, years of practice. <laughs> welcome, emperor of the royal family. <laughs> he can parallel park and everything. He's got his license. What, he's got his license. Yeah, Remember, that's funny. <laughs> that, that's like going at the speed of plaid. <laughs> I can only hope. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, Core, you were we were going back to you, right? Yeah, that tends to be just briefly to touch on that again. That tends to be my theory too. Is there's Ragnaroks hidden somewhere, possibly at the bottom of Silver Tier Lake, waiting for someone to pilot it, and it will most likely be Graha. But I could think of a few other candidates, particularly if a certain someone returns who had a hand in such things. Anyway, um, when it comes to Alag itself. I would definitely want to see and learn more, especially in Endwalker or after Endwalker, like learn more about more than just Zandi, because it is very much a circumstance of you needed more people like Amon or even just people like Owen for that, for that example from 5.4 to really make it an empire that worked and ran and lasted for as long as it did. It wasn't all just Emmett like planning things out or Zandi executing things 
or any of the other emperors, potentially, for that matter. And I would love to learn more about their society and more about what actually went into the daily lives of the people. Like, what? how did they go about influencing the societies that they conquered in much the same way that we see the Garleans do now with their provinces? I feel like Allied has mainly been used for the technological side of things, but not as much as on the angle of how did it culturally influence those who came after it. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next part here. So, Zande was considered by many to be a genius in its own right. The highly ambitious Zande used his uncanny intelligence and charisma to build a nation that, while founded in science, did not deny the magic of the Second Astral Era. As you recall, the Second Astral Era was when they began to discover magic and began to manipulate and use it uh, in daily life. Um, the, those few descendants of the priests and witches of the Second Astral Era were welcomed and given places where they might hone their skills and wield them for the good of the people. Uh, as Zande learned more of the magic's potential, he assigned many of these mages to his normally newly formed army, where their unmatched strength on the battlefield allowed the young leader to subjugate neighboring lands with limited Allegan casualties. In less than a year, Alleg was the largest nation in Eorzea, and Zande crowned himself emperor. That's an interesting dif difference in there from uh, the because up, up on the sorry I just kind of took the... no 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 I was I was gonna stop after that and let you guys go okay so meow go sorry. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, no it's just uh, uh, up until that moment uh, your narration kind of echoed no 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 pun intended of of uh, Solus's rising Garamold. But the fact that it mentions that Shan the crown himself of emperor, that's a, that, that's a, that's the, that's the thing that kind of it's a direct that's... parallel. It, no, not not exactly because uh, uh, it's a difference actually because Solus uh, didn't get crowned; uh, he didn't proclaim himself emperor. Uh, the people of Garleon, the citizens, did. So that's uh, ah, that's, right. that's the thing that that's the thing that made me well. This is a difference. <laughs> um, foul, oh, Neil. But... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. no, it was just I was going to rumble something. Uh, rumble something about. Uh, rumble on. Uh, no, it's just uh, it's just the same that uh, uh, the rise of Alag. Uh, I mean. Perhaps it was even quicker than uh, the rise of Garlemald, but it's still both. Uh, but both uh, nations speak of a young, charismatic ruler or figurehead that uh, basically managed to rally people to their side because they, well, I guess they they, they were fine people to be around. I mean, I mean, you you can't. You can be you can be a good leader if you scare people away. So you know. <laughs> anyway, the thing the thing is that, that there's there's there are some some similarities in that. Uh, I'm not I'm not one I'm not in the in the in the side of people who think Emperor Shanda had the was him itself because of reasons we may discuss later, but there's not an eye that that could be that could have been a strong influence anyways. Oh, definitely. May I add something? It's actually a question more than anything. Go ahead. What is the source we have for um, Solus crowning himself or not? Um, do we have an in-game source? I know that the lore book um, uses the phrase... Um... <clears throat> so the first mention of the Emperor that we get is near the beginning of A Realm Reborn, um, when you are talking, when you get to done talking with the three nations and you are on your way to Sestasha. It's uh, depending on where you started, you will be either talking to one of the three leaders again and they'll go over uh, just stuff about Garlemald and they'll drop the name Solus Los Galvis and mention that he was a legatus before he crowned himself uh, the emperor. Well, that's the part I'm getting at. Um, Meowth has brought up on prior podcasts as well that um, 
that she thinks that uh, he was given recognition and then crowned emperor. Um, the lore book I'm reading now, it says, Garlemald was a republic until Solas Galvis brought all of Ilsebart under his control and named himself emperor. Earning the title, so... But it is a, it's an old lore book. It's Charlian propaganda, and I'm wondering if there's an alternate source. <laughs> I kind of recall where I can. I, I'm not sure where I read it because, but I, it stuck in my mind because precisely that's something that kind of happened during uh, Roman times, and it. I I, re, I recall this particular tidbit because. Uh, I was surprised that I mean it's like Yoshipi and crew actually know their facts, their their historical facts, you know. But I I couldn't actually. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't actually tell where exactly I read that. I think it was in game. I think it. I and I'm, some part of my back memory says it was during the Evil Is Quest line. Very possible. Um, regardless, you, did, you, you can't uh, you can't take power without the people giving it to you. That's just the That's way correct. society works. It, so, it, even oh, if you're yeah. incredibly strong, you still have a choice between death and servitude. So, I mean, it's just uh, uh, to be fair uh, and to be entirely honest, I trust the lexan tales in this matter more than Charlie and propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nila, That's let's fair. move on to you. I didn't have too much to say on this bit. Um, I do have my own musings on, you know, what role Em itself might have played in the Allegan Empire. But we will get, get to that. We will get to that. that. I have a figure that we're going to be all... talking about. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. Just a well, just a wait, just a little bit, because we have we have a certain figure in Allegan history that's very important, and uh, something on Twitter that's going around that. A lot of people are speculating. And you, may, you know, yeah, I love to talk about Emmett endlessly, so... Oh, of course. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Uh, Cor, do you... Neela, Cor and Neela, do you have any other thoughts on currently, r right now, about uh, Zonde's beginning? Uh, mm -hmm. And his subjugation of the surrounding provinces? Neela can go first. Nothing really for right now, I was going to say. <laughs> Cor? I guess my brief point would then be just that um, I would love to know if there was any real big differences between the Zonde that we see, who is, I guess, a clone more so than anything, and an individual who's consumed with a fear of death, which seems so different from that picture we get from the lore book of someone who's charismatic, a genius, a military leader, someone who's, like, you know, very energetic, very uh, forthright a lot more uh, dynamic in a lot of ways. It, it, they seem to be almost different people by the time we see the version of Sandy that we have now. And I would love to know more about, like this again goes into like, I want to know more about Alag in general. I want to know more about Zandi in general. Like how did he actually go about conquering the world or at least the parts of the world that started the Alag empire for other emperors to conclude the conquests of? Um, and how different is he from originally to now? I actually have a curiosity on this topic. Um, Go ahead. Well, with the the Titan cost, uh, the, the Titan quest line and the Cobalt Child and all of this, I actually wonder if Zande is not a clone, but a primal summoned hundreds of years after when he'd reached legend status, because he does things like um, destroy his own empire by mistake because he wants to be a tryhard. <laughs> so, um, but we'll get there. But it's just something to see it in your in your minds because I've been thinking about that the last couple of hours. Mm, kind of like a little bit, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the uh, or, or the origin of of, of a therochemistry. Um, so it goes without saying that the Allegan Empire would never have survived, let alone expanded and thrived, had it not been for the might of Zande's handpicked mage cadres. Uh, their most important contribution to the Empire, however, was not solely spell-weaving, but the incorporation of their magics into existing scientific principles. Siege engines enhanced with magics launched projectiles farther and with more precision, and sorcerer treadwheel cranes lifted blocks ten times their maximum load with a fraction of the manpower. One of the secrets of Aether had been unlocked. They were applied not only to war, but to everyday societal needs. From construction to medicine to transportation to communication, 
The field began to be came to be known as a thermochemistry, and upon its back, the Alleghenies would ride into a golden age of prosperity. So, this is where it starts to get interesting, because we use a thermochemistry today. Our Charlayan propaganda brethren use it probably the most. Um, who would like to go first on this topic about a thorough chemistry? Would it be you, Matt? Because you like to, you're trying to suck in air, trying to say something. <laughs> I'm actually collecting my thoughts, but fair enough. Uh, uh, if I, if any, if if you if you guys are fine, I can I can go. Uh, let's go with Neela first. Oh, I don't have much to say. I figured I'd just give her a moment to. To think, uh, <laughs> the, the thing that interested me here is the differing and yet converging lines we're seeing with the Allegan Empire and the Gurlian Empire. Gurlians start with very much on the tech side of things and start using that to access magic because they can't normally. The Allegans are like, we have these mage powders. Okay, let's twine this with science. Let's turn it into a uh, all one thing, you know. So it, it's it's interesting that they sort of approach the same issue from different angles and they're ending up somewhat in the same way. It is. It is. That's, that was all I wanted to comment on. Um, Cor or Fow, whichever, whoever first. Uh, Fow can go first. This is kind of a tough topic. The most data we have on ethereal chemistry comes from Azislaw. Um, obviously it's a technology that involves um, research into how ether works in living beings and that how that would interact with the chemistry of one's biology um, we've got uh, tons of hybras and other chimeras hydras and other chimeras uh, roaming throughout all of Azis law it's their primary research facility but as far as the inner workings go i'm definitely not the expert and in fact i don't think anyone on hydalin in this era knows all that much about it even say the ironworks crew um, we really need a whole expansion's worth of research for them to really tell us much more. Exactly. Um, Core, and then we'll move on to Meowth. I always thought it was a little interesting that they presented atherochemistry in such a truncated way in some respects, because it really did feel like, especially if you go to Aziz Law and Coils, that it, it becomes synonymous with the idea that the Allegans are doing genetic experimentation on dragons and other creatures to create uh things they could enslave for military purposes when in reality it's like what the lore book says it's something that had an impact in both peace and war in diverse contexts and i wish we'd gotten a chance to see more of that more of the practical applications for things like construction and potentially being able to see any way that those practices could be revived via perhaps like a garland ironworks take on architecture, Allegan architecture and Allegan uh, construction techniques. That actually yeah. reminds me of the future oh. timeline and how the Ironworks crew are hopefully going to rebuild their era. And exactly. I guarantee you they're going to camp out up at Azislaw, especially after building yeah. a multi, an omnidimensional time machine. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> That future is going to be amazing in about 500 years. <laughs> their future has some bright thoughts still in it because of things like that. We need to pop that time bubble first. <laughs> <laughs> that Simpsons bubble. Meowth, go ahead. Uh, I would like to first point out uh, something that's said in chat through Magitech. Well, I would say that uh, Magitech is the better version of a ethereal chemistry. Because the Garleans cannot use magic, yes? Uh, uh, the Allegans could, but the Gar the Garleans actually have to use a substitute magic, which is, which in their case is is, is cerulean. Uh, that kind of works is kind of fuel, so it works kind of the same. But uh, of course, etherochemistry is uh, more uh, can, has a lot more possibilities because I don't even know if cerulean can be, for example, aspected. While in Asisla, uh, Rahati actually mentions that uh, there were 
well, uh, lightning aspected things or probably fire aspected things as well. Well, with with pure ether instead of cerulean, you could probably do way more things. Uh, and uh, but that's an interesting similarity too because they probably are not they they're probably different, but at the same time not that much because for example the Garland Ironworks whenever it's time to you know, dismantle, decode something from Alec, they use Magitech, and it usually works. So I guess it's kind of uh, as if you're using uh, Windows XP to, the, to, 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 to you know, uh, the, uh, try to do something from Windows Let's be real, they use Windows 95. <laughs> what are you talking about Windows ME? Oh, that 5.5 5 spoiler. <laughs> but uh, the thing they had the blocky as hell start menu. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it. Bring your floppy disks, the five and Have a quarter you tried inch. It again? I mean, the firmware they're... update is several thousand years out of date. Yeah, they're, they're kind of. I mean, it's for, for Galamo, it, it works because we've seen the everyone else is using Magic Windows, Day, but at the same time, Alex is using Mac. <laughs> Uh, I have I have my 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 rebuttal on that because uh, <laughs> go, that's, go. that's not fight, that's fight. not the that, that's not the that's not the topic. Uh, we're just trying uh, to derail you. Continue. <laughs> no, but uh, Garland Mold, as of late, we've seen them working interesting things with sy with synthetic oralsite. Uh, oh yes, which is a difference, and it's implied that uh, oracite uh, was also used by the, by the elegans. How? Uh, well, that's another topic, and that uh, that's a lot of room for speculation, especially yes. after, after Bosnia. We're you. going to go into Bosnia another week because that's a that's another meaty one. I think we should do a two week stint on Bosnia, Ivelisse, and yes. all of the lore books that we yes. collect because I just recently went into them and I'm very impressed. Yes, yes uh, we will go into that. That's another monster but to dig thing, into. Anyway, uh, to conclude, uh, it's a, uh, there is something that I don't know who of you said it, that uh, ethnochemistry is more about uh, it, it started working on chimeras and stuff, which is a kind of organic. And if you go into a thermochemical research facility, the neural the neural in the cell, which is where we find Lahabori and Igeju are, it's kind of this organic pulsating thing mixed with, you know, the 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 the, the, the elegant structure. And I re actually recall the first time I uh, walking there and was like, <clears throat> I don't like this. <laughs> it's almost so, almost okay. reminiscent of what we have today in the towers. Yeah, I, I, that's what I thought later when I don't know uh, in the server. In Discord server, uh, we were discussing ethrochemical research. But it was like, hey, wasn't there a neural link, neural link nestle that was this disgusting, fleshy thing that the, that <laughs> the elegance did? Yeah, it, 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 I, I hate that stabbing sound. I mean, uh, but I actually wonder if our uh, dear. One and only Fan Daniel can take inspiration from Alec and their thermochemical uh, research for his solo towers. So that's actually a room for thought. And if that we're is. going, if we're if we're going to get more Alec in and Walker, that's pro that's maybe perhaps a connection they may they may make. So let's continue um, on to its golden age, and this is during the height of the Allegan Empire. Um, Zandi knew that he would not live forever, but that he was not about to allow his life's work to come to naught upon his passing. So he carefully groomed his offspring to carry on his legacy. As a result, in the years subsequent to the first emperor's death, the direct descendants of Zande fostered the growth of the empire by dispatching the armies to the far corners of Ilsebard and Othard. While there were resistance, the Empire made short work of all who stood before it, and in time there was not a city in the three great continents where the imperial standard did not hang. Literally, they were one nation at one point. 
Um, would anyone like to go into this, talk about it, before I go on to the next part? Only a planetary unified civilization can make a space empire. Yep. Yeah. It does seem very weird. I also find it interesting that this is generally what Virus want, kind of was aiming for. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's also probably the reason, And but there's something interesting here. Uh, because uh, we find Elgin ruins in the burn that's authored, so it's all the way uh, to the to the far east. Uh, and there's actually actually the legend about uh, the Outlander. Got something in your throat. The 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 the, the shell the shell uh, or I'm not. Uh, I, uh, uh, the, the the lizards of the step uh, tell about uh, about Dalinud and stuff, and Asisla. That's another that's another 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 topic to to touch upon. Oh yes. So yeah, it's kind of. I have to wonder uh, though if it was uh, a whole planetary thing, or it was most uh, just most of the th three great continents and part of Morsidia. Because, you know, there's Hingashi, which is basically kind of isolated, but allows uh, foreigners to stay in Kugane and trade with them. There's Thavmer, who, that's a nation that's pretty much rather uh, kind of like Switzerland in terms of neutrality and diplomacy. And there's a new world that maybe they don't even know... Uh, uh, and, and anything about about Alex. So, but still, that's if if they got that far, uh, that means that was kind of they came very close to probably unite the great three continents and part of another one, and that's quite mm, more an achievement than anyone else has managed to do. So yeah, and well, knowing the purpose behind Alex, uh, it's I mean it's. It's kind of, I mean, the logic conclusion, you know, that's exactly what the aim is. Yeah. So, um, it, does anyone else have anything to say? I'm going to move on to this next part, because this next part is really good. Anyone else? No? Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, with no more enemies to fight, peace prevailed and the people thrived. The focus of the empire now shifted from expanding its borders to bettering the lives of those who lived within them. <laughs> One such undertaking involved the construction of a massive array of spires at Silver Tier Falls, designed to gather the very rays of the sun and deliver the energy to the homes and manufactories of the empire. With the completion of the Circus Tower, or the Crystal Tower, as it would come to be called in that early scripture of later eras, uh, the Allegans built their reliance on Myriad's machina to ease their daily burden and allow them to concentrate on the bettering uh, their minds and their souls. For three centuries, not a war was waged on the three continents, and bloodshed which had, been, which had spawned the Empire became but a blemish on a forgotten age. Guys? Silver Deer Falls. There's a lot <laughs> fun back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, How deep so do the I'm tendrils gonna, of the tower go? I'm gonna look. I'm gonna start with Cole this time. <laughs> that's, that, 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 you gonna that, start that, with that me? Is actually, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'll come back to you. Don't worry. Core, go. Uh, oh man, it's just they're they're really setting things up, aren't they? With and Walker and revisiting Azzy's Law a lot, and then having us have that little hint in the 5.5 trailer of something in front of that particular lake, which we haven't had any real major story beats at for a very long time. Um, I would love to know how deep the tower goes. I would love to know what happened to these other spires, potentially, if they existed at yes, all. Yes, because they use, the, the, yeah. they use it in the plural term, spires. Wouldn't it be interesting if there was more crystal towers and the circus tower was part of a network? centered on this particular place for some specific reason. I want to know more about 
what the connection between that potential network was to Dalamud and if they were planning on making any other satellites or if they indeed put any more satellites into space. Or, you know, they could, that the spires could be called ingenious devices and we just don't know about them. Exactly. I'm like, I, mean, I don't trust the Charlians or the people to really correctly interpret everything the Allegans will find in scripture and writing, um, that any particular flourish may later be interpreted as, you know, like either too fanciful to be true, even when talking about the Allegans, or being something that they just wrote off as like, well, it can't be this, so it's probably this, mm-hmm. and misinterpretation. Um, I'd also like to know, uh, in terms of like, was all of this the Asians designs or was this actually like the Allegans just developing of their own accord, things that they needed being driven by, um, need as the mother of invention. So let's move on to Neela. Well, when you were reading that description, one particular thing stood out to me. That was how many ages again? Did it say how many years without war, without any kind of fighting? Three centuries. Three centuries. Think that's three hundred years bonkers. for humanity. That's pretty freaking bonkers. Like that's that's, that's ancient. That's, 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 that's why it stood out to me because that's very much like the ancients. It's interesting that this like pursuit, this unity, seems to have somehow led instead of. Uh, it, it, it's interesting because Emmett itself touches on this at the latter. Instead of, you know, the conquered being upset, they conquered, obviously the conquerors treated the conquered with dignity, allowing them to be some sort of a harmony there. Instead of there being constant uprisings. Obviously there was something that they were all working together, and I wonder, you know, I wonder if uh, chemistry was maybe the heart of that. I, Quite possibly. A quick, a quick, a quick note. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, what's the, what's the longest period of time... Uh, of absolute peace between major powers that happen in human history. I could not say. I was waiting that's for you to say Pax. this. Yeah. That's the Pax, that's the Pax Romana, the, the Roman peace ah, okay. that, lasted, that lasted for 200 years. 27 BC to 180 AD and included the last of the exactly. five good emperors. Very interesting. Exactly. I also... <laughs> my, my note. <laughs> I also uh, was was thinking based on that kind of harmony. I'm like, I look at that and I'm like, no wonder Emmett Self keeps waiting for people to be finally good enough, finally complete enough. He probably thought they had it then. He was like, oh, humanity's got this. And then it all went, you know. And, uh, crap. and you know what, though? And he's really proud of that. The fact that he conceived a nation that hadn't had a war in 300 years. And he's like, man, this, this is, is better than I thought. Uh, and then they went and got greedy. Mm. They obviously we'll, we'll they discussed the decline. Yeah, we'll go into the decline later. Yep. Oh yeah, we're, that, we're we're getting there. It made me think of the ancients when they uh, when they said it was that long without war. I was like, okay. Um, Fow or Meowth, uh, whichever, whoever wants to go before I move into this next part. I'm happy to continue, except to say that um, a global civilization, uh, civilization with 300 years versus 200 just covering all of Western Europe, uh, that's a heck of an achievement. And it is. I think we should just pause on that for a moment to realize the scale of what uh, Zande achieved. Three continents worth. So that's yeah. the entirety of North South America. That's the entirety of Africa. That's literally the, wor- the world, basically. He unified the world and yeah. prevented war from breaking out for 300 years really is amazing what can be achieved when you are able to re- uh, make it to post-scarcity as atherochemistry seemed to suggest was possible for the lack of creation mandrake. Okay. Meowth. I have a number of things uh, that I've been kind of, uh, you know, trying to not forget from what uh, what each of you have pointed out. One of them is, uh, it's interesting about the series of spires that we did, because we only know Circus Tower. And I, for one, I'm, when, I don't know who questioned it, is, was, was it the will of the Asians or was it the elegance? Well, that was uh, my I'm, pre- uh, yeah, sorry, I, 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 my memory is 
all good. <laughs> I'm, all right. uh, I'm quite sure that behind the crystal tower, uh, that was certainly a Metzog. Because why? Because he uh, kind of, uh, he kind of heavily implies that in Shadowbringers with his private chat with the Crystal Exar. Uh, he well knows what the Crystal Tower can do, what it cannot, and that he also can control it. Uh, and of course, there's the whole you know, awesome things that we can find, find into the Crystal Tower, among other things. Uh, that's interesting. I, I, I'm actually curious if the other spires, if the if Circus Tower was uh, one of these spires and it was kind of dedicated to the sun, we have been 13 spires for the, each one of the convocation and symbols. That's just a theory. I would, I would like to think of this number of spires uh, feeding and, and making lives better for uh, the Allegan Empire being something like in a structure like the Chrysalis. I mean, yes, that's just that's just a mental. I'm also thinking. I'm also thinking now of the idea of like how in common fantasy trope fashion, there's always the idea of a mage's tower and the convocation being a council of mages. It might be that they were trying to recreate that imagery, like deliberately, mm. uh, Vat Emmett's influence to like create something that was going to guide the star to a better future. And remember what the crystal tower, or what the crystal exarch rather called the crystal tower. Uh, he called it a beacon of hope for mankind. He called it several things: a beacon of hope for mankind. Um, he also called it a limitless reservoir, or a reservoir for the limitless energy of the heavens. He he basically been his time within the crystal tower. He knew what it was used for. He knew the um, what it could hold, what it couldn't, and the history behind it, what all it would be able to contain. May I offer uh, a tangent uh, regarding this? Sure. Yeah. I, uh, I, again, taking a moment just to touch on um, the Grahatia we leave at the Crystal Tower and the one who spent a hundred years going through lore books uh, on the first and before the travel. Uh, vastly different levels of knowledge and mm -hmm. um you know, the medieval idea of a mage, you know, if you don't know how technology works, of course it's wizardry. So just those yeah. two things in, in confluence I wanted to add. And I, and the other thing, I this may be a moral subject more, more, more than anything else, but it's considering uh, the, the peace that was uh, achieved after the Alagan conquest. Well, it lasted for 300 years while its rise was quick and probably, I guess, uh, as it usually happens in wars, there was a number of death, destruction, etc. But uh, the result that we have seen is a long extended period of no war breaking between any, of course, because they were united. So in doing this thing at the, at the, at the beginning that may have a, may have started as a blood beginning they in over time they saved more people than they probably killed in 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 during this, those conquests then again i'm not defending uh, i'm not defending war of course but it's just a matter of perspective of thinking it's like the same moral dilemma with the rejoinings for example and i think uh, when people say we don't know what would happen it's i'm kind of looking at, at the the Elegant Empire's record, and it's like, well, it's in a really small scale, but I think we have a pre and uh, uh, it, it, it's kind of complicated because you know it's this gray moral and stuff, but you have to appreciate uh, those times in which there was no conflict, and so the 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 rulers of the Elegant Empire could focus on making the lives of everyone who lived there better. So, yeah, it's kind of, you know? <laughs> All right. I I'm going to move on to this next. Oh, go ahead. Very last thing. I think what Meowth is trying to say is the achievement one unlocks when you truly unify humanity under a global standard um, can cause hmm. massive technological jumps. 
Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm going to move on yeah. to this next part before before we get too stuck on one subject. <laughs> the miracle of atherochemistry has given had given the Allegans everything they had wanted and more. Yet a man who believes he has everything will not strive to create a new. Lacking the drive that once made uh, it great, society slowly fell into disarray. The people had grown complacent, abandoning learning and dr- drowning themselves in leisure, relegating any and all work to machina. Birth rates plummeted, while suicide became increasingly common. Leaders grew corrupt and complacent, leading to isolated uprisings in the worst of cases. Now we see the effects of constant peace. You are not worthy to inherit this star. (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of... Anyone, like, any thoughts on this before I move on to a significant figure? Amron, or sorry, um, Amron never got complacent. Ally did get complacent, is really what I think kind of you more. Get that point. Very it, became, it became you more in a sense, yes. They succeeded so much that they got lazy. They got complacent. They decided, we've achieved everything we needed to, now we can just, you know, chill out forever and do whatever the hell we want forever. And We are one nation. We're, we don't have to worry about anything anymore. We are beyond want and purpose in that sense. The, the hunger and drive to create was was lacking like not perhaps universally but it, it certainly it kind of reminds me a little bit of the eldar from warhammer 40,000 who became so technologically advanced and successful that they too kind of fell into decadence oh i love this led into their own destruction and the later you know damnation of their entire species can i just add and i know it's Go not ahead, topical uh, the eldar are the only race that has accidentally birthed a chaos god that destroyed their entire empire by having too many parties. <laughs> yep. I feel like Ally birthed a lot of other unfortunate things, including deities, uh, because of such things. Mm-hmm. I that just want probably... to... Oh, sorry. sorry. That, was probably to also... that was probably also the time period when Emmett was like, his initial reaction of, well, maybe they actually can do this after all reversed pretty quickly back into no no they can't no they can't neela go ahead i I did find it interesting that a life of ease and leisure and all needs being met somehow led to birth rates plummeting like i figure people would be doing the rabbit thing it it indicates sorry (laughs) it indicates to me that they must have found some kind of way to have like birth video games (laughs) No, no, video games no, and Papa were, John's, and we know we only have kids so they can work in the fields. So, <laughs> you, you know. Yeah, well, we it's funny to do the do do the rabbit thing for us. So, <laughs> maybe maybe this is an indication that they had extremely high uh, high fidelity virtual toys. They uh, they definitely the had they definitely had full at. dive technology. <laughs> It just is interesting to me because that's not usually what happens when when resources are unlimited. Anyway, I just I just saw it. I was like, that seems so backwards. I think we killed me out. Scientifically I, speaking, I mean, I could see it being a potential thing where yeah, they they invented atherochemical uh, contraceptives and people just like they were still doing that stuff, but they were doing it in ways that didn't actually create lots of children. That's Hence what I'm trying to assume. You, you, you can't be doing it with Magitek armor all the time. So. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Fow? Yeah. Oh, no, I put it in chat. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, this meme. What's wrong, babe? <laughs> <laughs> also, Bahamut, I see you, and yeah, they never got complacent. They were hit with a calamity. Uh, I'm. Yeah, let's go ahead. If I, if I may. Uh, I think. Uh, well, 
Emirates is not uh, a perfect society, but they were uh, playing certs. Of course, this is the uh, they just got they got the the third time uh, third times rejoined at times at times as well. Like yes, uh, so we're talking even now we're speaking of people that were uh, even more sad than we are now. So they were playing on a lead a bit, perhaps too much high, too much uh, too higher far, yeah. that they that it, I mean they're not the ancients, of course. The ancients, even though they they could create whatever they wanted, uh, they were they had a different a different well everything <laughs> actually was with. A different education, a different upbringing, it's just everything. So, they, the, the, the society uh, got so close to the ancients but failed to, because of the standards, you know, unchecked. Uh, well, let's say flaws, passions, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's, and that's interesting. Uh, yeah, it kind of reminds me of Ilmor, and, and uh, even though Ilmor was not exactly the pinnacle of advancement, but the situation was rather similar, and uh, it kind of brings to mind the idea, of, because it's, it's especially the, the, the note about the suicide, the suicide rate, uh, and it's like, stagnation is truly death, you know? Uh, it's kind of, uh, yeah. It's the, the ancients, uh, as the way I see them, they they kept uh, their kind of conflict. They they had conflicts, but in an, in a different way, and they know, knew how to handle them. But Allah was different because, of course, this is the whole situation was complex. Was is different at all. But yeah, estimation uh, equals death, uh, and I think I, of course, uh, death leads to well panic, and that's a chain, that's a snowball that goes down the hill. But yeah, it's it's kind of the moment uh, growth stops, and there's this. No progress, no everything, everything, and it's just decaying. It makes me wonder what the decaying. Well, it makes me wonder what the future is going to hold for uh, the descendants of the Garland Ironworks in this timeline. If they ever match what the Allegans achieved, but in a peaceful sense, will they repeat that same mistake or manage to avoid it somehow? So let's move on to a certain person, a certain subject, and a certain <laughs> individual uh, that we all know that has caused some controversy lately. Um, all right, so this the Empire was becoming crushed under its own weight, inching ever closer to destruction while its people sat glassy-eyed in their homes, dangerously dependent on the luxuries science afforded them. There was one man, however, who was not about to stand idly by as Oblivion crept ever closer. A talented technologist by the name of Amon. Amon believed that what the Allegans needed to save them was not another invention or technological breakthrough, but a strong leader. A leader who could ignite the fire in the heart of men and wake society from its apathy-induced stupor. A leader in the likes of Emperor Zande I. Instead, however, of waiting until another individual with the qualities of Zande appeared, Amon believed that better success would be had with a more direct approach, resurrecting Zande himself. So, with this first part out of the way, I'm going to have your thoughts, you guys' thoughts on this. I'll move on to the second part, and then I'll go over what uh, the buzz has been about lately. So. Uh, we'll go with Fao first. Yeah, uh, Amon is intensely interesting, but we don't know as much about him as I'd like. We obviously fight him in the Crystal Tower, and what a disappointment that was. Although, cool spells. 
Get behind the ice block. Guys, it's just get behind the rock again. That's all. <laughs> please kill the experimental by product number 76, please. Yeah. Oh, are you a frog now? You better uh, blow up some Watch of the, the ice, snakes. but not all of the ice. Watch the snakes. Watch the pyros. <laughs> anyway, jokes aside. Um, do you want to add anything, or shall I go yeah, to Neela? Yeah, I, I, can, I can add a few things. I mean, chief technologist in an empire such as this is not anything to sneeze at. Um, but one wonders where he's getting his ideas, because uh, you know, if you've seen a zombie movie, resurrecting people is probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was the elegance downfall. You can't tell me what to do. Movies. It never, it never works out the way you think. Like it's not. There's something wrong. It's either a demon, or the brain's gone, or <laughs> something else happened. Like maybe don't do that. Or you lose your arm and leg trying to revive your mother. It's awful. Oh yeah, and your brother like turns into a statue. <laughs> <clears throat> suit of armor. You and I did that exactly the same time, banana. High five. I'm also thinking of uh, LucasArts The Dig, where that guy comes back to life with the crystals, and he's like obsessed with having more of the crystals, so he doesn't really have life so much as an addiction. Esperian in chat, I want to uh, rephrase what you just typed, which is, has Full Metal Alchemist taught you nothing? <laughs> <laughs> it's taught me to clap. Yeah. Things happen when you clap. <clears throat> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Akor or Nila, would you like to add to this? I just wanted to go on a bit more about the technologist thing. I don't recall. Does anyone know? Was he stated to be the chief technologist at the time of the Empire's, you know, collapse, basically? Uh, Owen, I think, mentions that he is, or at the very least calls him the Lord Amal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember if it was confirmed or not. Thank you, because... Uh, I seem to recall that also resurfacing in 5.5, uh, something about members of the royal families or the chief technologist, so it's, like, interesting. Yeah. Yep. Core? Um, we don't really know enough about him to do much commentary, except what has already been said. The main thing I would say is just that, um, I know we're going to get to this comparison in a moment, but I do find it very interesting, at the very least, that he has that connection to not only technology but also drama and theater and fancy looking clothing um it makes me wonder if he was in some sense a renaissance man who was able to he was desirous of rebuilding the empire from many uh different angles not just through technology but maybe a reignition of the culture and the arts he was trying to stave off decay in any case yeah. Noble goal, bad result. Exactly. Meowth. Uh, I find it. Uh, I find it interesting. We'll I get to that, like... Tara. <laughs> uh, I'll save the big part, the big chunk of this, uh, of this thought process in a moment. Uh, but the most. The thing that most intrigues me about Amos is <clears throat> that uh, is his resolution. Uh, it's like, uh, okay, uh, we can we need a strong leader that may change that may change the change the the situation here. But instead, the 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 bad thing is, uh, well, I'm not going to search for one. I'm going to resurrect the one we know, and of course, it it, it goes, but it was wrong because we, well, this is we'll most that. speculation. This most of speculation, but I think uh, uh, that there was that that was the big mistake. Trying to, trying to, well, uh, mess, uh, trying to mess around with life and death. That's not many people can do that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go into that actually, because this next paragraph goes actually into that. Um, techniques to temporarily restore life to mortified flesh by growing it anew had already been discovered by elegant scientists. Amon believed, however, that a temporary return would not be enough to ensure a rise from the ashes of the once mighty Allegan Empire. What were needed was the secrets to eternal life. 
And so Amon began a series of experiments combining chimero biology and cloning in a last desperate effort to see to achieve immortality. In the early stages of these experiments, he used brigands and revolutionaries to test his newly developed techniques. Once his methods have been refined, uh, he and me moved next to the emperor's bloodline and then finally to his own self. The results were promising, prompting Amon to move to the second stage of his plan, the unearthing of Zande's tomb and the resurrection of the emperor. Using the solar energies collected in the crystal tower combined with the newly performed, newly perfected vivification techniques, Amon achieved the impossible. Zande walked to Eorzea once again. Before we go into anyone else, there is a thing going on Twitter that so there's, I'm not going to name individuals because we, I've seen this at so many different places that I'm just you know I could probably retweet it and it could be retweeted by a thousand different other people and show up on my trend feed. So. They are comparing Emmett Selk to Amon, and Amon to Emmett Selk, and are musing that they are one and the same, due to certain visual aspects in the game. And in their personality, and in several other variances. To me, to me personally, I like entertaining the idea, but I do not believe it fully. But that is also a subject that I wanted to bring up before you guys and have your thoughts on it. So let's start with, this time I want to start with Meowth. That's that's actually rather easy to say it's probably 90-90% the case unless they retcon this thing quite 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 a lot because right now we we've, we've learned that Amon what tried to do was um, the vivification basically extended life and stuff that's why uh, he and the royal family probably lived longer than than usual and he was still around for what will happen next uh, and uh, the crystal tower Raids, if you recall, uh, Joga and, and, and May uh, speak of Amon uh, f- as the one who sealed the tower in time. Uh, the, uh, but there's no mention whatsoever that uh, Amon at the time was a clone. Uh, if Amon was not a clone, then there's two possibilities, and one of them is uh, almost certainly the case that Emmett Silk temporarily possessed them or that they were different different individuals. And I find uh, that Emmett Silk temporarily possessing Amon very, very unlikely because he heavily criticized Lahabrath for possessing living person. You know? And uh, and uh, ex- actually Emmett Silk abhorred to do, to do that because that uh, besides, besides the tool, I guess it's Nothing. I mean, that's that actually uh, erodes the sanity of, of of the action in question, possessing a living person. Uh, so yeah, that's the thing. And at the time when we fight Crystal Town, uh, this is canonically between many quotes in A Realm Reborn. That's just that means that that's not even. We got we got news, Doma, that the emperor basically kind of passed away months ago. Uh, so it's virtually impossible that they could have shared the same the same body. You know, that's that's the easiest way to to put. It. And this, um, there's the whole thing with life and death and stuff and the resurrection process. That there's a lot of det- details that went wrong and. Someone like like him at Silk wouldn't have uh, probably toyed this grossly with 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 Sandy because there 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 are things that went wrong that well things that couldn't possibly be known I guess yeah that basically sums it sums it <laughs> okay um so let's go to Fal next 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there are obviously some corollaries between these two characters, but, um, and I zoned out for a moment, so my apologies, but uh, essentially, um, I think what Meowth and I discussed earlier is that Emmett Salk doesn't have a habit of hopping between bodies, right? He, he likes to, our only real example is Solus, to be honest, where he takes the body and keeps it for life, which kind of fits with his ethics. So I would imagine that um, five eras ago, uh, he behaved similarly, but I honestly, we have no real basis to know. Um, but, um, you know, the, the one we fight in the tower, provided he's not a clone, which I don't think he is, um, you know, why would we, I, I just don't, I don't see the pieces fitting together very well. That's the shortest way to say it. Uh, Neela, you're next, and then I'll move on to Kor, who has a lot to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I've i heard the theory, I've seen quite a bit discussion of it, I've seen arguments that explain, well, yes, it could technically have worked with something to do with stasis, and, you know, because he obviously can't be in two places at the same time, that would be a bit much even for an Asian. <laughs> uh, I, I, I simply, personally, I don't buy it, it doesn't fit to me. I think what's happening here is that they make an archetype, a, you know, a, a, an Ur character, and they draw from it. They've drawn from it in more than one case. So we have, you know, the theater, theatrical snap your fingers style of behavior. It, the, there's no reason it can't be two different people who have similar personalities. Precisely. I, uh, I, th I think that we, 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 and it doesn't help that in Final Fantasy, not only Asians can take over a body and then take over another body in another era and another body in another era. But even even souls are reborn in a cycle of constant mm -hmm, rebirth. Mm -hmm. So it, it's easy for us to say, oh, well, they must be related. It must be connected. Not not everything is connected. Uh, for example, think about all the people that, that people assume Hithlidaeus must be. Oh, well, Yashtola makes this gesture with her hands. That doesn't mean it's her. Kral is very playful. Oh, it doesn't mean it's her. Et cetera, et cetera. Not everybody has to be an agent. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. The difference between creating an archetype and drawing from the archetype and saying that these two characters are hinted to be one and the same is very fine, and in Final Fantasy it can be damn near impossible to detangle. So I 100% get why people look at it and say, oh, it must be the same. Like, that makes sense to me. I just, it doesn't fit to me. Moreover, like, I think someone, I think Mialth was mentioning uh, how he kept Solus's body till death. Well, he tells us, he straight up tells us, I prefer to keep the same appearance until my job is done. So when Elidibus woke him up and was like, yo, uh, we got problems, he was like, well, the job's not done, I'll just keep this old appearance. I don't see him switching back and forth between Ammon and then to uh, Solus, you know. I, I don't see him having a Solus break in the middle of his Ammon time, if he were that. So that, that's another thing that, that puts me off of that assumption, basically. The other thing that is that what I've observed is that the Asians tend to create the situation for rejoining. They tend to create all the all the prerequisites and get it all ready to go, and then they hand this loaded gun to man. <laughs> and it, it's, a good, it's a good analogy. They're like, yeah, well, let's see if you're dumb enough to make our plan go forward. I, That's I really great. I love this. I haven't observed them. And, I, and I, we could get more information that elucidates this. But as of now, we don't see them directly cause the calamity. They set it up and hand it to them. I feel like Admin does a little too much in the, like, resurrection of Zandi. I can see the argument, but, like, Zandi's kind of being a clone. It sounds like he had the memories of dying, which is like, ooh, that's probably bad. Mm -hmm. That seems a little traumatic to me, anyway. I feel like it's a little too direct of a uh, setup for the Calamity myself, though. Again, it could be I'm argued about. Dog. Dog. <laughs> I would know <laughs> that's what I was here for catch up. <laughs> I really love this. Um, touching what you're saying, uh, touching on what you're saying about handing humanity the loaded gun and seeing if they're stupid enough, because it's like a self-calibrated test where exactly. they'll be worthy when they don't mm -hmm. effing do it. Precisely. And, I, and, that, and the fact that they're handing it, obviously, to the less savory, the less uh, considerate and kind and wonderful portions of humanity does show us that they are skewed. You know, the test is a bit rigged, which is understandable considering the testers are tempered. So they're being forced by tempering to view things through a certain lens, and then they perform actions that continue to reinforce that, of course. 
but there's still some element to it. It would be fantastic if the entire world were united and all said, no, we won't do this. If I may, and a quick note precisely on that, if you have played Trade Beca- uh, Become Human, uh, well, uh, there's the loaded gun test actually remind me of some one of the scenes I actually really found really interesting when one of the guys to test Connor, the android who is chasing the divergence, uh, puts an android down and says, if you want the answers uh, and I can tell you, I can tell you everything if you shoot this android and if you, uh, you, you'll be assuming that you have empathy and you're a divergent yourself and you cannot, uh, and you're evolving beyond uh, the laws of robotics and being, well, you know, being a robot. And, and I'm go- not going to tell anything. Of course you have the option, but the common option is to not shoot the android. Uh, and that shows up that re- uh, there's an evolution of, of a robot into, into, into humanity. So it's kind of as if mankind as of now, as Sander, is basically robots and empathy and not, not firing the gun is the higher state, you know? So I find, I find it really, really, really interesting. Go ahead, Cor. Um, a lot of what I was going to say was touched on, but I think the most important thing to remember is going off of what Neela, uh, Neela said, which is that um, it just doesn't really fit the MO of either Emmett or the Askins for them to just take breaks, especially when it comes to an individual that was involved in a previous rejoining that has been stuck on ice for thousands of years, who is no longer relevant to their plans in the active sense. Like, he was pretty much done with Solus. He was going to take a nap. He had no reason to show up as Amon, if he ever even was Amon to begin with, at, at like any point in the more recent period of time that we're dealing with. Um, what I like to think is that the similarities between his character and Amon are a product of his previous cover, whatever it may have been, in, in the Allegan Royal Court, influencing Amon and perhaps pushing him in the direction that he went, that Emmett got disillusioned with the direction that the Allegan Empire took, saw in Amon someone who represented those qualities that he had previously liked about the Allegan Empire, but who was also disillusioned by its current decay, and decided, I'm going to manipulate this individual and give them an out, give them a way to, like, not only cause a rejoining, but also to prove that this really was like a failed experiment, that like, I'm going to take this person who's supposed to be indicative of all the things that are good about this empire and push them in this direction of, I'm, you're not actually going to solve the problem, but I'm going to make you think that you're going to be able to solve the problem. So, and that uh, they probably <clears throat> share a lot of qualities as well, like that they shared perhaps like a love of theater, they may have actually been involved in like the construction of Circus Tower's actual theater room that we fight him in. They may have watched plays in that room. They may have interacted in many different contexts and would have had their conversations in that context that led to, well, maybe if we bring back Sandy, maybe that will fix our problems and like, you know, pushing him in that direction. And in addition to maybe dissuading That's him from solving the tempering problem in turn that it was not as important. He just said, it's not as important for you to worry about this. You should be focused on this other plan to bring Zandy back so that we can bring the Empire back into control. Um, so I want, to, before we move on to the uh, next part, I just want to go over a few uh, things about the some of the bosses that you fight in Circus Tower. Um, there are some tidbits on them as well, and I'm going to go over them pretty briefly before we move on to this next part. Uh, Scylla, the first boss you fight in the Crystal Tower. Uh, well, Circus Tower, as it's known. Scylla was a high-ranking archmage of the Allegan Imperial Cadres. Uh, she was tricked by Amon, a lifelong adversary within the Imperial Court, into participating in the mad technologist in, uh, experiments with immortality 
promised never-ending life and limitless power, Scylla begrudgingly agreed to the alteration of her corporeal form, only to wake with the to from the anesthetics to find the snapping maws of wild hounds, creatures most despised by the mage, where her own head had been once had been. Uh, Glaz Glazia Labolas. The second one, the one that everyone skips mechanics on, and they were actually pretty fun back in the day. Agreed. Uh, one of Amon's few voluntary subjects, Glazia Labolas, commander of the Imperial Honor Guard, was fiercely loyal to the Empire, enjoying himself by personally tracking down and mercilessly crushing any and all seeds of rebellion. The experiments were successful in granting the commander immortality, ensuring eternal service under the great Emperor Zande. However, side effects saw the already dark mind further fevered. Uh, General Phlegathon, uh, leader of the many rebellions that erupted in the war waning years of the Allegan Empire uh, under Imperial and hold on, Imperial Annals paint Phlegathon as, as a murderous villain. Writings of the common folk, however, revealed the general's status as a hero of the people. Adored, by, adored as he was, the revolutionary leader was eventually captured by the agents of the Empire, and his body was forcibly altered through sorcery and science, his mind broken and his condition to obey. So, this next part relates to what happens to today. And so I'm going to go into this. I'm going to go over a whole paragraph and we'll talk on it. Um, Amon's genius and obsessive nature made dangerous bedfellows, leading to the death of countless subjects before ultimately bearing fruit. Not only was Zande resurrected from his millennium long slumber, but he had achieved both immortality and an otherworldly vigor in the process. Over the next few days, the Emperor was briefed by Amon on the myriad changes in the realm uh, the realm had seen in the thousand years since his death, the advancement of civilization, the extent of the Empire's breach, and the state of the people. Once aware that he had uh, what he had to work with, he moved quickly right to the ship, starting with the ass assimilation of the current Emperor and any loyalists by, to the regime by the Glacia Labolas led Imperial Honor Guard. With the throne reclaimed and the potential challengers to Zande's authority conveniently disappeared, the new emperor wasted little time restoring the Herefor to Herefor impotent Imperial Army to its former size and strength and ordered it to its first mission. The full force invasion and occupation of the southern continent, Mericidia. Who would like to go first? That's a mouthful. I have just a quick note that I found interesting, if that's all right. Go ahead. I found it interesting that they called the, they, they said he revived the emperor from his slumber, right? Yes. What an odd word. Like, he was dead, right? I'm not crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, 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 it just calls to mind some Christian uh, beliefs in eschatology, you know, we shall not all sleep, and they're referring to death here. That just interesting terminology that made my eyebrows rise a little. That's right. There is, there is a historical term that it was used. It, it means sleep, but it really means death. Precisely. S sleep, but we're going to get resurrected one day as, uh, you know, in Correct. immortal bodies. Right. Hmm. Um, there's an interesting parallel to the to you know Drowsy Napolo or Emmett uh being technically having power over the, over death. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of kind, kind of fitting, I guess. Uh, then again, then again, it, in Greek in in Greek mythology, death is brother to to sleep. So yeah. It is possible that he was in a pod somewhere, you know. I we just don't have evidence, right? You know, it's it's. I mean, it could have been literal. It could have been figurative. I I can't really place it. I'm leaning figurative. I'm inclined to lean figurative as well, but it is still yeah. noteworthy. Oh, agreed, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Meowth, 
Or, Korg, you have thoughts? Hmm. Yeah, I can go first. Okay. Uh, there's the thing about uh, Sandy uh, as... Uh, there's something that bothers me about, about Sandus quote between quotes resurrection, because if he let's say he's it's a figurative man of speak of a speech and he pass away, okay, then the soul goes to the live stream and go and there's the cycle of rebirth. Then my question is, how the hell uh, Amon resurrect? Sander with the same soul, and um, probably, uh, I mean, it's kind of, they may have uh, implemented, if they store data from Sandy of so they probably may have implemented him, the, his memories of some sort, but the soul would, be still, would, would still be missing, and maybe the, what later <coughs> how it caused, well, you know, the things that will happen will happen later but it's there's something kind of shady in the whole deal it's like you can't just resurrect someone like that and unless you're you have a very specific set of powers you know yeah i don't think it's possible my pet theory is that he was not resurrected touched on that very 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 much earlier but i don't think it's the same person i think it may be the same body but um, the change in behavior, immediate uh, assassination and war effort, th there's something twisted about this that is different somehow. And either through the trials of actually dying and coming back and it is the same soul, or um, perhaps they just chimera one up. There's something weird or, going on here. Or they perform a Shiva body. Correct, yeah, that too. That's possible. I, I do find that interesting as well. Um, it, it makes me wonder if, if the the clone was no soul or a different soul. Obviously, um, the Emmett Self bodies, the, sorry, the soulless bodies that Emmett Self was using seemed to be empty vessels, no soul, no nothing, but they also weren't activated, as I understand, so I don't know what difference that might convey, if any. I just, the thing that gets me is that the way the resurrected Sandy behaves, the way he sits, the way, you know, mostly just body language, but it really makes me think of Xenos. Sure. Just a bit. No uh, small bit. Yeah, just a bit. Just a teensy bit. Concern. <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, Core, do you want to go next? Mm, I don't have as much to offer on this point. I just find it... If, it's just another one of those instances where, like, I want to know more, essentially. Like, there's there's a lot of, like, different ways that they could have gone about this, potentially, and could have narratively explained it from the writer's perspective. And we don't really know, and I don't know that we ever will know, so it's really a matter of just speculation at that point. Like... Especially when it comes to the idea of chimericizing a soul, like that feels like something that even the ancient would have struggled with if they ever Dead achieved word. Dead <laughs> word. <laughs> so certainly, I'm like, I'm wondering then if that was the route they they went, how that was achieved. Did Emmett perhaps, if he had any hand in this, as he probably did. Did he maybe take ideas that had originally come from the ancient world and try to apply them in practice in this context? All right, so I'm going to move on to this next part because this goes over what happened after. So just as Amon had predicted, the Re Zande's return had revitalized the Empire, igniting a fire in the hearts of the complacent and providing them with purpose. The Army's ranks swelled with new recruits. Many factories began hiring manual laborers to meet increased demand for weaponry. And scholarly circles were abuzz with new, in new discoveries and inventions. The Allegan Empire would be great once again, and the road to greatness led south. The Mercidians, however, were not about to give up their homes without a fight. Which is interesting because we see something slightly different from when Tiamat described it to us. They... She described it as they 
came and they coexisted for a period of time, but then they began to get more aggressive in their land. Um, I'll, I'll continue, though. Uh, with the Empire's first wave of attacks were largely successful due to the fact that they were unexpected. Subsequent raids into Maricidia uh, were, they were unexpected. Subsequent raids into Maricidia proved more difficult. The native peoples of the southern continent banded together under the leadership of the dragons, who had also claimed dominion in Maricidia. While without equal on the three great continents, the Imperial Army's chimerical war beasts were no match for the dragon's fiery breath, and countless casualties were suffered. This, however, only served to further motivate the scientists of Alag in their ungodly pursuit of might through biological manipulation. And it was not long before they had created abominations which exceeded the might of the Maricidian horde. In decisive and bloody battle, the Algans slew the dreadworm Bahamut, paving the way for immediate occupation, or so they believed. Now we're getting into good stuff. Okay, this is where Omega comes into play for the first time, yes? This... Not right away. This is okay. not... No, no, no. This is where, this is where Tiamat, uh, and recently, mm -hmm. patched 5.5, touched on this. My bad, my bad, my um, bad. I hey. want to... Uh, excellent reading. I wanted to... Uh, they actually said Dawn Worm, which I find is brilliant. It, I love this. Uh, Bahamut as the... The dragon of the morning. Hmm. Akmar. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Val, you started first. Let's let's hear your thoughts on this. Okay. Uh, it's an interesting difference in perspective. Obviously, Tiamat in five five discusses that um, things were chill. And then all of a sudden they came in force to uh, pull a proto uh, Ishgard. And, and I humans. You can never, you can never trust them. There, first, there were people the, there already, non allegans presumably. I believe that'd be the tree people, probably. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, don't don't trust humans. They keep doing this. Is we the don't lesson trust them I, got. I mean, it's you know whether it's a dragon or an Asian we're not good enough repeatedly constantly consistently well dragons are technically as far as we know on sunset so. <laughs> but i don't have much more bit. to add on this um let's go to neil thoughts have, on versia i have one thing that i kind of noted here it was the difference between the old elegant emperor and empire and this new alec basically in the, in the old time, it was, you know, conquer the world, but then also be cool about it, create a unified society, lots of peace, lots of scientific advancement, magical advancement, science and magic hand in hand. The new one, they're like, and more to the point, they also were very much like, uh, we're not going to mess with the gods, that was a bad idea. And the new one, they're like, let's just gather power. And again, maybe they were trying, I assume they were trying to reprise the old one, well, we'll conquer people and then once we create a great peace, it will be, it'll be worth all the, all, the, all the death, all the bloodshed, all the loss and destruction. But they also, instead of, you know, being like, nah, God's not so much, they, uh, they kind of, well, we'll go into it, I'm sure, later. They kind of pressured people to summon gods. It was, it's very different culture and attitude. And I think that's probably why it didn't go so well the second time. Uh, Meowth or Core Healer? Mm, I'm trying to think of... Hmm. I have to wonder, uh, regarding Maricidia, like, why it wasn't conquered earlier is about the only thing I can really think of. Is Dragons that, and tree people. That would be, I guess, the main thing. But, like, I'm also wondering, like, I guess... Sandy was like, well, now we need something to direct our energy towards to make us great again. Because as Just far as we know, he, no one decided to go south. Like, I mean, that's that's like people deciding to take over Antarctica and claim it as, you know, under their standard today. Although Maricidia seems to be a bit more hospitable. Just a bit. But, I mean, Bahamut was the go- According to Tiamat, Bahamut was the go-to between the dragons and the people. 
And then Zod Lady decided to... Ooh, dragon. Pew, pew. Yeah, there were clearly people living there, at the very least, that were living in harmony with the dragons. And Allega the Allegan Empire kind of screwed that all up. So I'm, I'm trying to think... Again, I'm just kind of wondering why it wasn't that they... Because it seems like people went down there. It makes me wonder if the Allegan Empire had a presence there before at this point. It's possible. Meowth? Nah, I'm just thinking about uh, the whole thing with Bahamut, and uh, yeah, I agree with Fao that Bahamut being named the Dawn Worm is kind of, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's interesting. This is when this is when Tiamat and Bahamut was failed, and everything went downhill from that. Uh, so, as far as I understood, Bahamut worked up until then as this kind of uh, figurehead that uh, both uh, mankind and dragons would follow in Maracidia. Uh And he was like the, the one who kept them united. Uh, and that's exactly where the, where that, that, that's exactly what Sandy uh, and the elegans went for. Uh, they they aimed to topple Bahamut, and everything crumbled after that. Uh, and I also agree that the the this new empire is not exactly. It's way different from what we see, uh, and the motivations are largely. It's not. It, it it's. It's not. It's not a pure wish anymore. It's just. I don't know how to describe it. It's like an artificial way to break the stalemate and the stagnation, and it, of course, works as as well as expected. Because I assume at that point, mankind is, is just not ready for the kind of society that the ancients had. So. Any attempt is going to feel. It's going to break. It's going. It's going to go downhill. And I don't. I don't know if I'm making sense. It's just. I guess no, no. I'm feeling I get. Um. So I'm going to go partly into this next part because we are short on time, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Say who. It is because I'm going to leave that for next week as a teaser. But. Hint, I'm going hint. to read at least the. Yes, I'm going to le read at least the first paragraph, and I'll leave you guys to speculate. Uh, with the dragons all but defeated, the Mericidians turned to their gods for salvation, invoking terrible beings known as icons in one final attempt to rid the land of the Allegans. While there is no record of any icon currently primal summonings in Mericidia prior to the Imperial invasion, immediately following the fall of Bahamut, multiple tribes were simultaneously successful in calling their deities from the Aether, suggesting that a third party may have been involved in the passing of the specific knowledge required to do so. Yeah. Who wants to go first? I'm not saying what they are, who they are, without saying who they are. Who would like to go first? Not clear on what can be said. <laughs> what are you? What are you teasing? Maybe, maybe DM us real quick. Uh, I have an idea what it is. I'm I want to spill the whole it. bag, and you want like a couple beans. <laughs> Muntoy bean. <laughs> did you just say Muntoy bean? There you go. Yes, I did. Why? What other kind of beans do you? I was correct as to what it was, but I didn't. I still don't really know what exactly we can talk about regarding that uh, without actually. So spilling let's. Them. Well, no, no, no. The the last sentence in particular, because we are in an age right now where. Almost the entire world is in agreement that we should not be worshipping the gods anymore because the earth was torched, or at least Eorzea was torched uh, to the ground the last time we did that. 
<clears throat> well, the entire world. Uh, are we uh, uh, mostly this whole this whole eras seem to have focused on the Orsia because Orsia is like the United States in movies. Everything, if it, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen there. <laughs> That's funny. That so, might be the only way in which it's the U.S. True. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's conquer a, countries. A, yeah, America. <laughs> Imperial. Yeah, well, it's fun. I agree with that, Mila. Oh, was it Sarah? It might have been Sarah. I was just giggling. Well, I mean, it's, it's just. I mean, <clears throat> no, I mean, it's just. Uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that religion ex still existed to some extent, and probably in zones that were not elegant. Uh, territory they were, but as it usually happens, why uh, they probably didn't have the need if they if they were at peace and there was no war, they probably had their beliefs and they didn't have felt the need of manifest their manifest their, their, their deities. So it's just also uh, this. I mean, we kind of uh, we are used to uh, to the Asians being portrayed as this backstabbers of sorts that change sides whenever it's convenient which i mean in a sense it's fair but <laughs> but it's 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 to me that the, that they well you know you know who is people the knowledge of someone in icon that's <clears throat> at this point it's, it, it's it, it, you, we know that uh, but to me this seems to fade to to in to indicate that the Elegant Empire has fallen from grace in the eyes of the in, in the eyes of the Asians. So they're basically gifting older nations first Morsidia, and I have uh, the suspicion that other nations too were were granted uh, stuff, but to 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 make Alak, of course, with a purpose. But the, it's interesting to me that basically Alak seems to have fallen from grace. It's not of it's it's not useful, and probably uh, they saw they saw at the moment. Amon took the lot of gun and that thing. <laughs> in other words, the um, the rot has set in. It's time to rejoin and reset. Yeah. Um, would anyone else like to add to this? I'm I'm banning any and all uses of the uh, the words that I typed in <laughs> chat. Did you step in snow? <laughs> if that's all, then we're pretty safe. Don't trust the Asians, they play both sides. Well, I, I think actually, chat, you dingus. Might not be nice to be said for playing both sides. If I might, actually, I was thinking about that when Miao said that, because it's much like what Orian Zhe says. Um, he who holds fast to his convictions, you know, and I forget the exact quote, someone can help me. Who, it's on well, my profile. Never, Yes. <laughs> but never count the trail among are his. You, uh, are, are you mean? Are you mean? But it's it's notable. In his, in, in, it, in his, he in who count he who holds fast unto his convictions shall never count betrayal amongst his crimes, though all the world may call him villain. But thank you. Uh, it, it, it's it's especially. <laughs> It's especially applicable to the Asians because the reason people are like, well, you betrayed us, so you deceived us, it's because they don't know the Asians' true roles. They don't understand what they're truly loyal to. Once you understand what they're actually loyal to, it all makes sense. It does, except um, Rianje using flowery language to disguise what is, on the surface, absolutely a betrayal. The, <laughs> the idea that you have some sort of higher allegiance and that means that the people you messed with don't get to be mad is utterly wrong. Well, they can be as mad as they want, but it's kind of on them for not yeah, really it's like, understanding. Do I consider myself a betrayer? No. That's what that's what that statement exactly. is. Exactly. Saying just because you didn't understand the game I was playing doesn't mean I'm the bad guy here. Well, it, it actually brings home the relative morality thing that in itself brings up, too. Yeah. I mean, the Asians are basically playing, and they, they're legion. Well, it's well, it's just, it's debatable because the tempering and stuff. Uh, let's say their allegiance is um, seventy percent zodiac, uh, thirty percent the star. Uh, maybe they're uh, the same. 
I think what we're experiencing is the sleeping primal allowing yeah. room for one to be themselves. That one might stray at the end of so when it's a pattern. Is understandable. Yeah. Yeah. It is understandable. But yeah, the, there's this thing that uh, we, uh, from this point on, we see other nations getting their hands on mysterious uh, technology and knowledge. <coughs> but yeah. <coughs> um, you have a really bad cough today. You need to see yeah, someone. Yeah, I, 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 I'll probably die soon. <coughs> from curiosity. Uh, yeah, I that sooner if you'd like. No. <laughs> <laughs> not before, the, not before the keynote, please. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Priorities. <laughs> Priorities. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, it's it, it seems that Alag, as of now, it's uh, okay. Mm, you know, uh, you know the meme like uh, uh, friendship with Alag has ended now. Uh, Basically, everything the rejoining is is my new friend. Basically, <laughs> would anyone else like to add to this? Core Neela. Uh, I don't have anything else for this topic. Hopefully, we'll pick up with it next week, and it'll be a lot of fun. Oh no, it'll start off with a bang. I guarantee yeah, it. Because, it's going to uh, be a banger. Please attend. It's gonna be yeah, I, I I posted what what we're going to be talking about next week in in the live chat. So let everyone except you guys in chat know, and uh, starting off, it's going to be strong. Mm. I guess the only thing I would say to this topic is I am very much eager to see if we learn any more about it in the future relative to any other potential uh, entities of this variety in the future post and Walker. Because it's probably going to be the case that we'll learn about lots more of uh, this kind of thing afterwards after Ant Walker. And that's the thing too, because like Alec we said this in the beginning, because Al Alec is so full of history and lore and how it ties to the present. You can pretty much find something to tie back to Alec in each part in almost every part of the uh of Highlands history and throughout the world basically um in civilizations cultures and civilizations history there is something to tie back to some type of reference to alec because they had united the world essentially yeah but this was conveniently i mean uh, there's of course the the, the, the fourth the fourth umbrella calamity but mm -hmm. uh, it, even so uh, the next era and subsequent ages it's like it's only now that we begun. You, we're starting to unearth Alak. That it's it, it actually started rather recently. Uh, even before that, the people of the people of Eorzea believed Dalamo to be, you know. Um, uh, 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 the reason behind that is because of what happened after the fourth Umbro calamity in the fifth astral era. Yeah, I know, but it's kind of strange that there's this. In in a sense, sort of deliberate erasing of Alec. From a storytelling perspective, it seems very intentional. Yeah, that, that's that's my point. It feels like someone didn't want uh, Alec to be remembered. You know, a um, good way to close up, I guess, and I'll let Amy do this, but um, I did want to add. Go for it. It's interesting from the modern era, skipping all of the Alec stuff, just skipping completely ahead to the modern era. It's interesting from a storytelling perspective how it was an action taken by a tempered legatus that caused the Eorzeans to even have a, a chance um, by the Bahamut uh, scenario revealing the Crystal Tower. I mean, the Sons of St. Koinak were just digging in the dark and then, uh, you know, th this, this whoopsie at the end of the invasion reveals so much more technology it's it's just interesting to me alec had a whoopsie poof we found it <laughs> yeah like let's summon this massive way bigger than it should have been 
uh, dragon demigod whose wings yeah, span Alex, who, 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 whose wings span skyscrapers widths uh, yeah. You know, if we didn't have this 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 phoenix incident, there's no way that that worm would not have raised the planet. Hmm. Huge. That could have been a real uh, whoopsie moment for the Asians too, considering yeah. that they put that thing in motion, and then that fucking thousands of years later. Yeah. I mean, the at, one of the Asians was funny. present at the time of. The, yeah. It's no like, flats. Yeah. Literally, Laha Brea was there with one of his he lesser was Asians. It. He was yucking it up. Yeah, I, this is fine. And also, Meme. It, mm -hmm. also makes me makes me because I have I actually uh, why the fuck Emperor Solo the the meteor project and if it was deliberate to unearth the crystal tower, well, that raises that, that raises a lot of questions as well. You know? Oh, I agree. There's never but... not a purpose. That's uh, that's that's going to be in Bajia, and that is going to be after our Alec episode, which so see will you actually in two tie weeks. in really, really neatly, too. Uh, two weeks from now will actually be the um, live letter. The, oh, uh, that's true. So perhaps fest. three weeks, yeah. once we all talk. Three weeks, yes. Yeah, once we've had a chance to talk about the revelations of the next part of the patch 5.5 Odyssey that we're all in. Hmm. Um, to close everything out, uh, so we've already we've already announced what we're going to be doing next week um, and for the week beyond and for the week beyond that. I do want to uh, note that Meowth and I will be doing a live Between the Lines uh, chat and episode on this Wednesday uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, CST, no normal time for Loreline stuff. Uh, we'll be discussing the uh, references, the tie-ins, the lore, and the basically the whole near Dragon Guard and Final Fantasy XIV uh, multiverse, as we will probably be calling it from now on. <laughs> yeah, what a thing to think of. Uh, Meowth and I have both played the Dragon Guard and Near series, so we have been speculating quite a bit in the Discord about what ties in with what. So we're it's just an episode to look forward to, especially if you're a fan of Yoko Taro's work. Yay. Uh, does anyone else want to say anything before we end this episode? Thanks so much. Are open. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming out. Feel free to join the Discord if you're not there already. We love to chat with everybody. Love hearing people's thoughts and ideas. My last comment would be that... Uh... My, one of my partners started playing the game recently, and we took her, me and another partner of mine, through Binding Coils of Bahamut last night. She made the comment that elegant architecture reminded her of neon, protoss, steampunky, kind of like blended together. Yeah. And yeah. I just thought it was kind of interesting that um, you could read a lot of different influences into elegant architecture with how organic it looks. I've always thought it kind of reminded me of Tron, or forerunner technology from Halo. How are you making me Tron Sandra the Circus Tower? <laughs> yes. I always liked the elegant architecture back in when I started playing the game. And being able to see it in Coil when Coil was new was always something that I really yes. enjoyed. I wanted to just quickly mention that. The Elegant Empire has always been fascinating to me. And now it's definitely more so because I'm a big Emmett fan and he had a big part in it, so Yay. Thanks for coming out, everyone. Uh, we will see you next time. You'll probably see Meowth and I a little bit sooner on Wednesday. Um, but uh, yeah, look forward to part two of Ally next, uh, next Sunday. Same time, same channel. And please care, spread the word and bring your friends. Talk to you next time. Yes. Yes. Everybody. See you. Thanks as always.